أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I start in the name of Allah the beneficent and the merciful I seek salvation from shaitan the accursed my dearest viewers from all over the world Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace, blessings and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you at all times Welcome to another episode of the Ramadan show with me, your host, Dr. Shabir Tijani. Inshallah, we hope to be your one-stop shop for the month of Ramadan. We'll cover many different areas, such as medical health, spiritual refinement. We'll have some poetry. And inshallah, hope to inspire you so that you can get the most out of this month. On these special nights, please don't forget us in your du'as. It is said that these are the nights in which the doors of Allah's mercy are open. So please don't forget to supplicate for us, for the whole of the Muslim Ummah, and of course for the reappearance of the 12th Imam, Ajallahu Ta'ala Faraja. Before commencing, I would just like to uh, start off with a small quote, a hadith. This is one of the most inspirational hadiths in my life, and it's something that I keep very close to my heart as well. It is from the time when Sayyidah Zainab went to the, uh, the courtyard of the accursed Yazid, and she was asked, she said, you have been through so much trial and tribulation. You've seen what has happened to your brother. You've seen your family slaughtered. You've been chained and brought into the streets of Damascus and then into the courtyard, into my presence. What is your thoughts about that? And Sayyidah Zainab turned around and said, I saw nothing except the beauty of God. And this is so close to me that I actually keep it on a wristband. And so I can see it at all times and remember that quote. Because surely, no matter what happens to us, everything manifests itself in the beauty of God. During this episode, when we talk about spiritual refinement, instead of talking about a specific trait, I want to focus our minds on the history and the biography of Fatima al-Zahra alayha, because she was one woman who encapsulated all the positive traits that human beings can have. Often we're told in this world that the value, or rather women are undervalued in the religion of Islam. You need to look no further than how highly valued Fatima al Zahra is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muslims all across the world. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has said, Verily, my daughter Fatima al Zahra is the leader of the women of the world. Just like the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, Fatima al Zahra was a perfect example, the perfect embodiment of a human being. Whilst the Prophet is the example for men, She's the example for women. She, in her lifetime, was the complete, complete woman, complete wife, complete daughter, and a complete mother, a mother of excellence. You just have to look at the, the children she raised, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Lady, Lady Umm Kulthum, Lady Zainab. And you see that these individuals, these personalities are a reflection of everything that's holy, everything that's good about human beings. They reflect characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, Fatima al-Zahra, she raised her children in such a way that they are now the crown jewels of the religion of Islam. Both religious and secular scholars agree that a child begins learning within the womb. And the foundation that is laid from the womb is essential for the future character and morals of that child. Fatima al Zahra is the ultimate role model for how a mother should be. You need to look no further than the way she raised her children. 
It has been narrated by a companion of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in Bihar al-Anwar. He once saw Lady Fatima grinding some grain. In the meantime, her older son, Imam Hassan, was crying. This companion said to her, he said, Would you like me to comfort your son? Or would you like me to continue or take over grinding the grain for you? She kindly said, Would you mind taking over the grinding whilst I comfort my son? This proves the importance of a mother being present around the child emotionally and physically. She, she showed by doing this that it is essential for a mother to make the child the first priority. Fatima the Zahra is considered a ma'asuma. She's considered infallible. She had the only honor of being a woman who links the prophethood to the Ayyamat al-Tahirin. Therefore, when we talk about Fatima the Zahra, we're talking about a woman uh, infallible whose manners were superior and unmatched. She was considered not only a role model for Muslim women around the world, but for all women and for all Muslims as well. One who chooses Islam as a school of life has actually chosen the way and goal that's based on human nature. Thus, such a person will search for a, for a character that possesses all the special characteristics in each aspect of life in order to reach the spiral and ascension towards perfection through understanding the life of Lady Fatima it is very clear to see that she reflects the same characteristics as her father Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him this can be seen in many narrations where the Prophet himself has emphasized the noble characteristics of his daughter once Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came out whilst holding the hand of Lady Fatima and he said, For him who doesn't know her, she is Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad. She is part of me, she is my soul, which is located between my two sides. Certainly, him who, who harms her has harmed me, and he who harms me has indeed harmed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another similarity between the Messenger of Allah which in itself is a complete and perfect proof of her being a role model. There are many other examples that prove her as a perfect and excellent model, role model for everyone, for all Muslims alike. Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, and some others have narrated the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said, O Fatima, glad tidings be upon you, for the Almighty has selected you above all women in the world and the women of Islam, which is the best religion. The Messenger of Allah has therefore honored his daughter and greatly praised her. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, praises Lady Fatima not only out of fatherly love and affection, it's a very objective praise. As a matter of fact, the praises are due to the existence of morals, ethics and values which are uncomparable in any other woman on, in, the, in the face of the planet and throughout human history. The Holy Prophet aims to make her a clear personality and a role model and a guide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom has selected the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the infallible Imams as the perfect human beings and guides for us all. In the same way, Lady Fatima is an infallible and she is also a guide for all of us. After all, she holds that unique characteristic of being the connection between the seal of the prophethood and the Aimma, the Imams. This shows and proves her qualities the fact that she was a person, an individual, a woman with characteristics like no other. She's a guide for all the women, all of our sisters, all of our mothers, all of our daughters. Inshallah, if we all follow her guide, especially the women in our lives, the women of our religion, then our society, our communities will be a breeding ground for the companions of the 12th Imam alayhi salam.
The Holy Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny, has said, Surely the month of Ramadan is a great month. Allah multiplies in it the good deeds and erases in it the sins and elevates in it the ranks. During the course of this month, I've been talking about different places across the world and how they prepare themselves for the month of Ramadan. Having gone through the research and speaking to other people, we've found a great collection of people from all around the world who tell us how they are preparing and how they have prepared for the month of Ramadan. One of the places which I've heard about, even though at the moment it's not quite as, as it was, is the city of Damascus in Syria, especially Sayyidah Zainab. Obviously at the moment, due to the unfortunate circumstances in Syria, times have changed. But of only a few years ago, the people of Syria, especially Sayyidah Zainab, have a very specific diet, foods they eat, and it's very similar to that of the rest of Arabia. So things like they eat hummus, which is made from chickpea, they have lentil soup, and they also love their sweets like many of the other Arab countries. So this is no different. The, di the main difference that I've found is the way in which the Hosas, because Damascus used to be one of the centers of knowledge in the Shia world, the Hosas there would host the poor people. They would host people from the community inside the Hosas and feed them during the time of Iftar. It is said that the, some of the houses would invite some of the greatest scholars and speakers from the Arab world to come and speak to the population or to speak in the majlis. People would sit there and listen to the majlis and gain a lot from these majlises. They would host iftar and then they would host people there until the time of sahur whilst they would have these majlises and especially during the nights of the a'mal and the nights of al-qadr. They would have the a'mal going through the night. The other unique thing about Sayyidah Zainab is that the young people of the families there on the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen, they would climb onto the roof and they would chant and declare their love for the Ahlul Bayt through their chants. This is something that is very unique to this part of the world to Sayyidah Zainab. As I've said before and asked many times in previous episodes and will continue to do so through the course of this month, we would love to have your videos. Please send them to us so we can show the rest of the world how you prepare for the month of Ramadan, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, how your working life changes during the month of Ramadan. Inshallah, as we go through this month, we will be able to show you more videos, more pictures and tell you more about people from all around the world and how their preparation for the month of Ramadan differs from other people from around the world. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Dearest Imam Hussain TV viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to the holy city of Karbala Today we came in one of the barber shops of the holy city of Karbala to ask the brother a few questions about the holy month of Ramadan and their job and what they are doing in the holy month of Ramadan in the holy city of Karbala <laughs> viewers I have one of the brothers here I will ask him a few questions Salaam alaikum Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah Mumkin ta'arufna bi hadratak tatfadhalna an ajwa' madinat Karbala in khilal shahr Ramadan al mubarak Fi al-haqiqa wal waqa' anna Karbala fi shahr Ramadan hiya layaliha takun mumayyaza wa ayamuha takun aydan fiha harakat amal wa 
بطبيعة كربلاء وجود الإمام الحسين في كربلاء وحضرة الإمام العباس في كربلاء وكثرة الزائرين إلى كربلاء. The brother saying that the life in the holy city of Karbala is totally different. The nights are different and the days are different due to the visitors to the holy city of Karbala. The life in the holy month of Ramadan is going on as usual in the holy city of Karbala, and the visitors come to the holy shrines of Imam Al Hussein and Abu Fadl Al Abbas alayhi salam. نعم شنو طبيعة عملكم خلال شهر رمضان يعني أكو اختلاف بعملكم لولا والله في من خلال يعني ب ب على أساس عملنا كحلاقين يعني أكو هناك يعني في أيام رمضان العمل يختلف عن بقية الأيام الأخرى عملنا يكون في يعني في شهر رمضان يكون أكثر شيء يعني ليلا ونتأخر يعني في الليل نتأخر إلى ساعات متأخرة في الليل يعني خلص عمنا تقريبا بثنتين أو بثنتين ونص ليلا بالنهار يعني تكون الحركة تكون أقل يعني من الليل باعتبار الناس صائمين ويخرجون يعني ما عصرا أو ما بعد الإفطار إلى كربلاء فيكون عملنا أكثر شيء بالليل يعني نعم. I asked the brother about their their job and their working hours. He's saying that we usually work at night and we stay up until 2 a.m. 2:30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and uh, during the day, the, the, the day hours, uh, usually the people are staying at home and they do not come to their barber shops. And then, uh, Sayyidina, what do you have from your own work? Do you have يعني احنا عندنا هنا هيئه هيئه الصديقه الكبرى في مسجد الموسوي لدينا ختمه قرانيه تبدا ما بعد الافطار يعني نقرا دعاء الافتتاح ثم بعد ذلك نتهيئ للختمه القرانيه يوميا نقرا جزء قراني فمجموعه من المنطقه يعني يكون المحفل والختمه تشمل الكثير من القراء يعني فيها من قراء محترفين وفيها ناس بسطاء يعني يقرؤون القران فلدينا عمل إضافة إلى ذلك لدينا شعائر نقيمها أيضا في شهر رمضان وخاصة في هذه الأيام أيام استشهاد الإمام علي سلام الله عليه لدينا فرقة للتمثيل وهي فرقة الطف في مدينة كربلاء أدنى عمل إحنا الأرض إن شاء الله في ليلة الجرح ما بين الحرمين وهو مسرحية استشهاد الإمام علي وأنا أقوم يعني في هذا العمل بدور الراوي والمخرج لهذا العمل uh, I asked the brother about what is he doing uh, except for, for his job here in the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, he's saying that uh, they have a, a Quranic mahfil here in the, the mosque of Al Musawi. Uh, after the, the iftar, uh, they get together and the youth of this uh, specific uh, part of Karbala get together and uh, recite Dua Al Iftitah, and after that, they, they recite one juz of the holy Quran. Uh, beside that, during the, the martyrdom, the days of the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, they have a theater here and they perform a play in which Sayyid is the, the, the role, has the role of director. In this episode, we'll be talking about medical tips and health advice. I want to talk a little bit about a problem or a, or a part of the body that a lot of people suffer with, and that's with their gastrointestinal tract. The role of the gastrointestinal tract is, is very, very fundamental to the survival of a human being. And a lot of people have ailments and problems that range from stomach acidity 
to things like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease. So it's very important to try and get a handle on these different topics, these different areas, these different problems. And inshallah, I will try and give you as much advice as I possibly can in order for you to be able to be as, in as much comfort as possible. And especially in this month of Ramadan, the last thing you want to do is after you've had your iftar, and even during the daytime, is to be suffering when you could be doing something else which is spiritually elevating for you. The role of the gastrointestinal tract is one that is unlike any other in the body. Of course, when we eat foods, the first role of the, hum of the gut or the mouth is to break those foods down into smaller pieces and the food then travels into the stomach. In the stomach, the acid is very, very severe. It is said that the acid or the stomach acid is at pH 1, which is one of the strongest forms of acid that you can have. Now, how does the stomach make sure that the acid doesn't corrode away at the stomach? The stomach actually produces mucus that lines and coats the, 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 the stomach itself and stops the acid from penetrating into the tissue of the stomach. The food, once it's been digested in the acids of the stomach, it then transports itself into the small intestine. The small intestine consists of three different parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. So the, 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 that's the full small intestine. Here, the foods get broken down a bit more and then get, get passed onto the colon, after which they get excreted from the human body. Along this pathway, there can be many problems that individuals face. And it's not a pleasant feeling to have when you struggle eating, especially in this holy month, when you starve yourself for so many hours during the day. The last thing you want is when you do eat something for there to be problems. The first type of problem that I want to try and address is what we call indigestion or heartburn. This is caused well, it can be caused by many things, but for some people, there is no known cause. They just have heartburn naturally. They have indigestion naturally. And there's nothing they can do to try and control that. Obviously, there are things that you should avoid if you do suffer from heartburn. Things like hot food and chili. Greasy food is, has a negative impact on the stomach itself. Other things are very, very sour and acidic fruits and foods. Also, anti-inflammatory tablets such as ibuprofen or naproxen, even steroids can have a detrimental effect to the stomach. Reason being that the ibuprofen and other anti-inflammatory tablets actually stop the production of a hormone called prostaglandin. It's not a hormone actually, it's just a, a protein that's produced. And that prostaglandin actually increases the production of mucus in the stomach. So if you take ibuprofen and the production of mucus is suppressed, what happens is that the, acid, the acidity in the stomach corrodes away the tissues and hence causing heartburn. Another thing you can do in order to help you when you have heartburn, especially for people who are fairly overweight, is to actually lose the weight. The reason being that when you are overweight, there is a lot of pressure that is put on the stomach and being a heavy person, being overweight, actually makes you more prone to developing heartburn. For people that suffer for long, from long-term heartburn, and for people who can't do anything about it, long-term indigestion, there are certain steps you can take, certain medications you can take that can help you. So these medications include a proton pump inhibitor, something like lanzoprazole or omeprazole, or a similar medication from that family. Other things you can take, are antihistamines, specific antihistamines that are designed for the stomach, things like ranitidine. And then there are medications that you can take when you get the symptoms. So antacids, things like um, um, bisodol, or other things like gaviscon that can help calm the stomach down. After that, the next part of the, the gut which people have trouble with is when the food gets down to the duodenum or further down to the small intestine. The problems that people have are things like um, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Now they fall within the same spectrum of inflammatory bowel disease. 
colitis obviously is more in the colon and Crohn's disease can actually be anywhere in the gut. It can be in the mouth, it can be in the small intestine, or it can be in the colon or anywhere else in the, in the gut for that matter. These are very, very severe illnesses and people can become very unwell with them. People often find that they pass stools which have blood in them or mucus in them and they're passing stools many, many times during the day. They have severe diarrhea. If you're having these symptoms and you have other symptoms that are worrisome, things like loss of weight, things like loss of appetite, if you're finding that all of these symptoms are ringing a bell, it is very important that you go and see a doctor as soon as possible because it's important to investigate because Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis can predispose you to developing colon cancer or cancers of the GI tract further down in your life. And there are treatments available for these conditions, things like immunosuppressants and other medications that you can take. But those medications, once you've been shown to have inflammatory bowel disease, you need to be referred on to a specialist who can start you on these very specialized medications as you will need to have regular blood tests whilst you're on them and regular checkups. The next part of the gut that I want to talk about is the colon. A lot of people have something called irritable bowel syndrome. It's a very common condition that many people in the general population have and as a doctor I often get asked about it. Now irritable bowel syndrome is basically an overactivity of the lining of the bowel. So what happens is that our bodies, our gut is designed to pass food down in waves for whatever reason Science has linked it to over ang f towards anxiety. People who suffer from anxiety tend to have hyper movement of their, their gut, the spasms of the gut because of this wave activity. And if it goes into overdrive, you can actually have spasms of the gut. There are certain foods you can take to try and avoid that. Things like nuts and pulses, things like onions. There are many other foods out there that it can actually have a detrimental effect on you if you have irritable bowel syndrome. However, the most important thing if you do suffer from irritable bowel syndrome is to make sure that you are frequently going to the toilet. By that I don't mean you have loose stools, by that what I mean is that you take plenty of fiber and plenty of water and when you do that it makes, it makes it easier for the food to travel down and be excreted from your system. During future episodes, inshallah, I should be talking about how the gut actually is designed, what's the job of the gut, what is the miracle of absorption, how the food gets from the gut itself into the human body and how it provides you with energy and much needed sustenance. Inshallah, until then, I hope that this episode has been useful for you, especially during the month of Ramadan when our eating habits are completely out of routine for us and we suffer from ailments of the gut. Inshallah, the last thing I want to leave you with is just some advice for you when you're breaking your fast or when you're having iftar. That advice is that between the time of iftar and suhoor, try not to eat heavy meals, try not to eat a lot and fill your stomach up completely. Try to have smaller amounts but more frequently. What that will do is it will help you to try and stay fit for a start and secondly it will mean that the acid production is limited and also for people who suffer from acidity my advice to them, just general lifestyle advice would be to eat frequent meals but smaller meals through the course of the day and to also not eat about four hours before sleep. As I've said inshallah in a future episode I'll talk a bit more about the, the human gut and other systems and inshallah you'll get more of an insight into how much of a miracle this system of the human body is. One day during the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib peace be upon him there was a woman carrying water from the river to take it back to her orphans who were waiting for her at her home. As a man, a strange man was walking by and went to this woman and requested to carry the water for her back to her house. 
the, the man asked, don't you have anyone to carry the water for you? She said, no, my husband was a soldier and Ali sent him to war where he was killed. Now I am left alone to serve my children. Strange, the strange man said, no worries, I will take the water for you back to your house. When Imam Ali Nabi Talib took the, took the water to her house, he saw the children and the orphans. He left with the thought in his head. He, next day, he came to this woman and knocked on, on her door. The, the woman said, who are you? The strange man replied, I am the man who brought you water yesterday. Now I have brought some food and dates for your children. The woman replied, may Allah bless you and judge between us and Ali ibn Abi Talib. She opened the door, entering the man in her house. I wish to do some good acts. Either let me make the flour into bread or feed the children and watch the children. Verily, well, when Ali ibn Abi Talib saw this and when the woman saw this, she told the man to watch the children and, and as he did, he fed the children and brushed on, her, on one of the children's head and said, Please forgive Ali ibn Abi Talib if he had failed you. As the woman was making the flour into bread, a woman from the next door entered her house and saw Ali ibn Abi Talib extinguishing the fire, making fire so the woman can bake the bread. She said, what is the commander of faithful doing in your house? She, in shock, she turned to Ali ibn Abi Talib and said, what, I am shameful to be in this position. Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib, please forgive me. Imam Ali ibn Talib said, no, I seek your forgiveness because I failed you and failed the duty towards your children. As we approach the night of power, the night of Al-Qadr, I want to dedicate the poetry to the one lady, that personality, who is the embodiment of the power and of the night of power. That is none other than Lady Zahra, Salamullahi Alayha. This poem is called Lady of Light, which has been written by myself and my brother Abbas. You are the Prophet's daughter whose blood runs in your veins who brought Islam to us and the whole world knows his name you are the wife of Haydar the mother of Hussein who gave his life for his deed and suffered so much pain Fatima, wherever you are the truth goes you are the Prophet's the precious, precious rose. rose. Your status Your only Allah, Allah knows. Fatima, you are the lady are the of lady the light. You are the you highest are the of the high. The light of the our light Prophet's of eyes. eyes. You taught us you how taught to us live how life. To live life. You, showed you showed us how to care. How to care. You taught us how, taught to, us give how to give and you showed us you how, showed to us how to share. You emphasized our morals and trained us to be fair. No matter if we're paupers or even billionaires. Fatima, your qualities how can I write? You are the lady of the light. The one that shines one out that strong shines out and strong bright. bright. The angels send, the angels their, send blessings their blessings upon you upon all, the you all the time. You are the you purest, are lady, the purest and lady and are the prophet's prophet sign. That household that, that, house you, come that you come from is sacred is and sacred divine. divine. For you in, For in heaven in there is a special is place assigned. Fatima, your father your always father said always of you, you, you are so you honest, are so and, honest so and so true, there is no there one is with no your one virtues. Fatima, you are the you lady are the of lady the light, light. You, are the you are the highest of the high. 
the light of our prophet's eyes, Fatima. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny, has said, Surely the month of Ramadan is a great month. Allah multiplies in it the good deeds, and erases in it the sins, and elevates in it the ranks. As we conclude this episode of the Ramadan show, we approach the nights of power, the nights when Allah's doors of His mercy are open. These are the nights where we need one another's supplication and we need to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to remind you before I go to please send in your videos and join us on social media. Before going, I just want to part a small thought a little philosophy that I've got to you so that you may be able to use it in your day-to-day -day lives and that is that Imam al Hussein, when we talk about Karbala he didn't give everything he had so that you would just mourn for him he gave up what he had so that tomorrow when you're faced with a similar situation you can make the right choice he gave up his everything for your freedom so don't choose to be shackled down by the chains of this world. If we use this advice and heed to it and learn from it, we will always be free in this world and in the hereafter. I would like to finally ask you to please not forget us in your du'as and humbly request you to remember to pray for the reappearance of the awaited Imam, Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. And with these words, I want to bid you farewell. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.